Today, we shall learn about development of tongue. Now, when does the development of tongue start? It starts at about fourth week of intrauterine life. And how is it formed? Well, let's know about it now. But before that, let's know what are pharyngeal arches. They are a series of externally visible anterior tissue bands lying under the early brain that gives rise to the structures of the head and neck. This is a picture of an embryo and these tissue bands are the pharyngeal arches. The first is the mandibular arch, the second is the higher arch, this is the third arch and the fourth arch. The fifth arch is also present but it is rudimentary. Let's have a look at the pharyngeal arches. These are the externally visible tissue bands. Now in this picture of an embryo, let's cut the pharyngeal arches into plane of section. This is how it appears internally. The tongue forms in the ventral floor of the pharynx after the arrival of the hypoglossal muscle cells. And as discussed, it starts about fourth week of intrauterine life. Now look at this picture closely and we shall discuss about pharyngeal clefts and pharyngeal pouches. The outer depressions are called as pharyngeal clefts and the inner depressions are called as pharyngeal pouches. These are present in between each pharyngeal arch. In development of tongue, the first swelling that appears is the tuberculum impar. Then there are two swellings called as the lingual swellings. And this is an hypobrachial eminence. With the reference of the previous picture, these are the two lingual swellings. This is tuberculum impar and this is in the first arch. This together forms the anterior two-third of the tongue. In the second, third and fourth arch lies the hypobrachial eminence. The second and third arch form the posterior one-third of the tongue and the most posterior part, that's the epiglottis, is formed by the fourth arch. The pharyngeal arches meet at the midline. Then there is local proliferation of mesenchymal cells. That gives rise to number of swellings and the first swelling that is seen is tuberculum impar. After that, the tuberculum impar is flanked by two lingual swellings. Lingual swellings and tuberculum impar merge together to form the anterior two-third tongue and the hypobrachial eminence forms the posterior one-third tongue. Fourth arch forms the most posterior part, that is the epiglottis. This is how the formation of tongue happens. This forms the mucous membrane of the tongue. Then how are the muscles of the tongue formed? Well, the muscles of the tongue arise from the occipital somites. They carry the nerve supply, the twelfth cranial nerve, that is the hypoglossal nerve. This is the lateral view of the tongue. This portion is the anterior tongue formed by the first pharyngeal arch. The posterior one-third of the tongue is formed by the second and third pharyngeal arch and the most posterior part that is the epiglottis is formed by the fourth pharyngeal arch. Let's summarize what we discussed today. There are four pharyngeal arches out of which fifth is rudimentary. A large mass is formed when the lingual swellings and tuberculum impar merge together. It is the mucous membrane of the anterior two-third part of the tongue which is covered by ectoderm. The posterior one-third is derived from hypobrachial eminence and is covered by the endoderm. The most posterior part of the tongue is derived from fourth pharyngeal arch and the muscles of the tongue are formed by occipital somites. Did you know that the tongue is not the strongest muscle of the body? We did assume, right? But it is the masseter muscle. And your tongue has around 2000 to 4000 taste buds. Isn't that amazing? Thank you for watching the video. We also have a PDF attached for you guys which has MCQs related to this topic in the description area. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you liked it and if you do, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for updates regarding the new videos. See you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.